day two of our spearfishing trip. This is our second and last boat ride of the trip. Uh, tomorrow we're debating shore diving and or just being a potato. But hey guys, it's like a morning. Good morning. We're gonna make it happen. Let's go. Let's go catch some yellows hopefully. But I heard we hear that they're pretty deep down. So just being hopefully we're lucky today. Um, if not, hopefully everyone grabs some grouper or cabrilla. Um, but soaked. We got the flow of things now, generally in how the boat feels and operates, so we can just focus more on diving. But uh, the captain's been super helpful and uh, super excited. See you in a bit. to dive one at Baja super excited another spear fishing day on the boat and this particular spot is an island with a huge drop off so we headed in the water and hopefully we can scan that drop and see if we can catch some big fish <laughs> These are called Cortez angelfish and these guys were everywhere, quite beautiful fish just to see around. So this is how the water was in this spot, um, pretty murky but generally decent visibility, I would say a hazy 15 until you got to the bottom and it cleaned up a little bit. Um, but you'll notice across the board in Baja, the water was a little bit murkier this time. And as I'm going down, I'm looking for a place to land and put myself, I find this rock here. I hold on and I'm trying to adjust myself so I stick my legs between those rocks. And you'll notice in this video, some air bubbles coming up. Uh, right about here. Yep, that's coming from my mask and what you generally want to do is avoid doing that You can spook some fish um, But more importantly just it's just more distraction for you when you're spearfishing down there So what I should have done is adjust my mask and reduce that um, but just for those of you um, Curious and what you should do about that and here I want to point out this school of fish on the left hand side these shadows I saw these guys quite a bit. I'm not entirely sure what kind of fish they are uh, But I did see them quite often on this spot. So pretty cool Some, but we did try to unload our spear guns before giving it to the captain to move to our next spot. But without further ado, let's go to the second spot. This is our second spot. We were going for a cabrilla this time. The captain had mentioned this was a pretty good spot for it. It was really close to shore, but these rock formations were some really good habitat for them. So we headed in and we're going for a cabrilla. rock formations and really close to shore I'm seeing these things called burrito grunts that I later learned 
right under these rocks. So I line them up and I grab one. Um, they're really cool looking fish. They uh, kind of resemble a snapper in shape, a lot smaller obviously, um, but really cool, nice green color. Um, but I saw these guys all over underneath these huge rocks, pretty close to shore. Closer to shore spots really look like an aquarium. Look how beautiful this is. I mentioned cabrilla a couple times, but this is one right here, a smaller one. But this is what a cabrilla is. I was looking for a bigger one, so I let this one go. But if you were curious, that's what they are. So this dive, I'm actually targeting this Mexican hogfish. It does resemble a sheephead in my opinion, the general shape and the teeth especially. And if you, those of you that are not familiar with sheephead, they kind of have these um, human-like teeth kind of in the front and those are used to chomp down on sea urchins and um, things like that. So you can see me here, I try to line up a shot, this rock right behind so I wait for it to clear. Boom, take the shot. Nail it, and this is a Mexican hogfish. So soon after that shot, the trigger mechanism on my Pathos Sniper actually malfunctioned and I had to use a friend of mine's gun, the Open Pro. So when you're out there and doing a spearfishing trip, make sure you bring extra guns, extra shafts, extra everything. A huge surprise on the way back in, we actually got to see a whale shark super close to shore. I would say in about 25, 30 feet of water. Absolutely gorgeous. Apparently this one was a juvenile. Um, they range from anywhere from 18 to 33 feet, I believe. And man, this thing was so beautiful. Um, so awesome to see. None of us were expecting to see one of these. Um, nor did we expect to see one of these ever in our lives. So just being able to see it, no, let alone be next to it uh, when it was swimming by, this was just an awesome, awesome treat. We just wrapped up our second dive of the two-day dive trip. Uh, we're going to be here for another day, not diving, but just enjoying uh, Baja and the culture and the food. 
Uh, but man, what an experience it was. First time in Baja uh, fishing, or this south of the border. And um, second dive was great. Caught some new species that we've never caught before. Uh, we had Mexican hogfish. Um, and we did have some cabrilla and grouper. Um, the grouper was not as big as the first day, but regardless, a awesome, awesome dive. So much uh, marine life that we don't usually see. So it's always a pleasure just being in the water, a new experience. Our captain was phenomenal. He was super accommodating, uh, was just on top of everything, dropping us off, picking us up, and just um, letting us know where the spots are from point to point. And uh, the cherry on top, a huge cherry on top, was the whale shark that was Awesome. That might be, it still gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. It was just unreal to see something that large. Apparently it was a juvenile. Um, it was probably just a little bit bigger than the size of the boat we were on. But man, that thing was so big. Uh, we saw it on a dive and we were able to film some of it here. But man, it was just so awesome to see. Um, so we're about to grab some grub um, and we'll see you in a little bit. But man, this experience has been so awesome. Um, for those of you that are thinking about spearfishing, um, if it's in Mexico or where you are, wherever you're from, it's it's an awesome experience. You just get, even if you don't catch anything, just being able to experience the marine life and just the diversity, the different types of fish you get in different areas, it's just so cool. But so far it's been a phenomenal trip. Captain's been great, the hosts have been great, um, but such, a, such an awesome trip so far. So we'll see you in a bit. A special thanks to the man in the middle, our captain, just pivotal in us having a great time and a safe time out there on the water spearfishing in Baja. So this is day number three on our trip and we are headed to this bar on the beach somewhat close to where we are. Um, about an hour drive on this dirt road, we're following some small signs and locals tell us it's a great place, you should definitely visit, really nice vibes, just chill and kind of get that vacation. Um, feel while you're out here. So we're excited to get there. You have to go down this dirt road to get there and you can see it got pretty bumpy and you'll find out why. So on the way to the bar, we actually got lost or deviated from the path and we got closer and closer to the beach, which eventually led us to our demise getting stuck and stuck in this pretty fine sand. So we dug ourselves pretty deep. We deflated the tires, tried to get out, added some water to the sand around it to thicken it up, try to get out, no way. Um, we're a two-wheel drive car and it is stuck pretty bad. We got down to the axles and we started digging. Uh, after an hour and a half in, Kay decided to, one of our dive buddies, head out and try to get a local to get some help, um, hopefully pull us out. Thankfully, we ran into Tony, Raul, and Tony's lovely wife, and they were able to pull us out and save us not only a bunch of time, but we would have been stuck there for hours at least. So 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 thankful for them they had all the equipment brought out their trucks and they would accept nothing from us so we told them to hopefully meet us at the bar at least grab them some drinks and some food it's the least we can do um, but we headed over and eventually made it to playa blanca so this man is the owner of the bar um, he actually grew up in the area went into the big cities and during the pandemic returned home and started up this bar um, it was just so awesome just to be around this man um, he expressed the history of the area so well um, he seems so knowledgeable of how things are, became the way they are here um, and he was just so passionate about giving back to his community where he grew up um, but they're just solid 15 minutes of this guy just non-stop explaining the history explaining things um, i'll leave it i'll leave a couple minutes for a snippet here but it was just super cool everyone was so nice including um this man here his name escapes me but super awesome wow yeah when uh when the turtle was legal in the 40s uh he made he, he was famous because the plate i mean of the dish of uh of the turtle all oh, right the, the people just came in, in by plane uh -huh. just to take the turtle uh -huh. and then go back just i mean the same day or the next day yeah and uh, it was uh, like very epic and very i mean now it's a, a small town but uh, before it was like nobody i mean uh, like 50 100 people in town wow. yeah so it's yeah. very yeah it's worth cheers, cheers. Cheers. 
So the guy on the left is Tony, the guy on the right is Raul, and Tony's wife is taking the picture. These folks are just awesome. Thank you so, so much. I'm so glad we were able to buy them a drink and some food. They're actually pretty close to us in SoCal, so hopefully we'll get to see them soon. But I'm so glad we got to at least pay them back a little bit for what they've done. Oh <laughs> Alright guys, that wraps it up for our fishing trip. It is bright and early, 4.22 a.m. We are just gonna start driving back, try to make it back for some fireworks on 4th of July. But it's been such an awesome stay here. We're about to load up our fish, some ice. And uh, yeah, what a day. What a, what a couple days. It's fishing, enjoying the sun, these little doggies. See you back stateside. So I didn't really take much footage when it was pitch black, but when the sun started coming out, it was really, really foggy as you can see here. So it was actually pretty sketchy driving around. So we drove pretty slow on the way back, but never thought this would happen in one of the hottest areas I've been in in a while. from Mexico to California and on the way back beautiful scenery along the way we noticed a cluster of rocks that hit the road over there we'll show some b-roll here and man we were like those are pretty big rocks and as we go down we saw a car this car stranded on the side we stopped to see if they were doing okay it turns out they just blew out one of their tires, the second one is not so great, but you can see here it's pretty, it's damaged pretty bad. Um, but um, we were able to at least go to the nearest town for them. Um, and we did meet two lovely people. Hola. <laughs> In English? Uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. You can do Spanish too. Um, hello, I'm Marina. And, um, this is a great <laughs> channel. <laughs> But she, she's been great. Um, she had to go out with um, Kay and Tony to the nearest town to get tires and swap this out. We were with Serge, Sergio? Yes. Sergio. Uh, we were just talking, but still not a great situation for them, obviously. Yeah, I'm sure they'd love to be on the road right now, but regardless, just meeting nice people along the way. Um, being stuck ourselves yesterday, we just came forward. And then, so they eventually got back, Marina got back to Guadalajara and Sergio got back to SD. It took them about over 10 hours for this to be all settled out and for them to be back on the road. Uh, there's no cell service, there's obviously no AAA and resources are relatively thin here. So, um, But it was really cool, everyone was very hospitable and nice um, and just trying to make the best of the situation. But I'm glad they got back, met new friends and we still keep in contact today. Um, so Sergio, Marina, shout out to you guys.
Hey guys, we are in San Felipe, probably the largest city before we head to the border and cross back over to California. So we decided to take a quick taco and tostada break. We wanted some sopes, but they're out, so no problem. We're gonna enjoy some tacos, eat some sopes, recharge, and head on home and wrap up this trip. So we are at El Vichos? Vicho? Sorry. Between that, but um, food looks really good. We're gonna enjoy that and then get back on the road. stateside and it was one for the books for sure so many good memories here highs lows meeting new friends um, experiencing things that we thought we'd never experience and man what a great spirit fishing trip what a great trip period um, if you made it this far thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed these videos um, on this trip more to come for catch and cook on the fish we've caught but please like comment and subscribe if you made it this far appreciate the support and have a good one.